This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. U.S. field production of crude oil rose in March to 12.696 million barrels per day, the highest since March 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic began to decimate global energy demand, Energy Information Administration data showed on Wednesday. The higher crude output came as production in Texas rose 1.8% to 5.398 million barrels of oil per day, also its highest since March 2020, the EIA data showed. Consumption of crude oil has ticked higher since the pandemic and after Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year caused a global reshuffling of oil and its products. Oil prices rose on Thursday, reversing earlier losses as a potential pause in U.S. interest rate hikes and the debt ceiling bill passing a crucial vote renewed optimism about further fuel demand growth in the world's biggest oil consumer. Brent crude futures for August rose 55 cents, or 0.76% to $73.15 a barrel by 0640 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude rose 46 cents, or 0.68%, to $68.55 a barrel. U.S. Federal Reserve officials on Wednesday pointed towards a potential rate hike, skip, in June that reversed market expectations of an imminent hike that could slow economic growth and weaken oil demand. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Global additions of renewable power capacity are expected to rise by a third this year. The International Energy Agency, IEA, said on Thursday, as stronger government policies and energy security concerns drive more clean energy deployment. In its Renewable Energy Market Update report, the IEA said additions of renewable capacity worldwide are set to jump by 107 gigawatts, GW, the largest absolute increase ever, to more than 440 gigawatts in 2023. Next year, total global renewable electricity capacity is expected to rise to 4,500 gigawatts, equivalent to the total power output of China and the US combined. The OPEC Plus meet on June 4 to discuss whether additional oil production cuts should be implemented. The group in early April surprised markets with output cuts of around 1.16 million barrels per day, fueling a rise in prices. But going into the meeting this weekend, OPEC Plus has given mixed signals on whether further cuts are likely, keeping oil prices volatile recently. We expect the nine major OPEC Plus producers which announced voluntary production cuts in April to keep production unchanged, but utilize some partly offsetting hawkish rhetoric, said Goldman Sachs in a statement. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. The London Metal Exchange, LME, launched two consultations on Wednesday on possible reforms in the wake of last year's crisis in nickel trading, saying it was following up on an action plan set out in March. The move is part of sweeping reforms to boost investors' confidence in the wake of last year's crisis, when the exchange suspended trading and annulled billions of dollars of deals. These consultations represent our first formal market-wide engagement on the initiatives laid out in our action plan earlier this year, LME Chief Executive Matthew Chamberlain said in a statement. A British consortium that includes mining giant Glencore will invest about $9 billion in Indonesia's mining and electric vehicle, EV, battery sectors, a minister said on Wednesday, as the resource-rich country tries to lure a host of multinational firms. Indonesia, which has the world's biggest nickel reserves, is keen to develop downstream industries with the ultimate aim of producing batteries and vehicles for the world's biggest electric car manufacturers. Investment Minister Balil Lahadalia did not provide a breakdown of the $9 billion but said it would go into an industrial park in the Bantang region on Sulawesi Island powered by wind energy, with a completion target of September. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Brazil is exporting 178,800 tonnes of soybeans to buyers in the United States, shipping data seen by Reuters showed, as the price of the oilseed in the South American country, the world's largest soybean supplier, is a bargain even for importers in the number two producing nation. According to May 30 data from Williams, a shipping agency, 
three vessels loaded with Brazilian soybeans will leave ports in the northern part of the South American nation between June 4 and June 11. Two others departed Brazilian ports last week. The purchases reflect Brazil's growing clout as an agriculture exporter. The country has surpassed the United States in exports of soy and, more recently, corn. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.